Welcome to our video on selecting and sizing corrugated steel decking for floors using tables. In the case of roof decking, uh, the corrugated material was all very smooth and there was no concrete used. In the case of floors though, we almost always use the corrugated steel in composite action with a concrete topping layer. In order to achieve composite action, you'll notice that the surfaces uh, on the sides of each of the flutes are embossed or given a, a shape in the rolling process, which allows the deck to sort of grab hold of the concrete and avoid sliding relative to it. So once the concrete cures, it can act in compression. It's on the upper portion of the composite slab. The steel is predominantly down near the bottom where we want it to be for working in tension. And uh, that composite action is achieved because of this odd embossing pattern that allows, um, that prevents uh, slippage from occurring between the steel and the concrete. You'll notice in this particular diagram, there are also some shear studs, which are designed to allow the concrete slab to work in composite action with the top cord of the truss joist that's shown down below. Right at the moment though, we're focusing on the decking, so we're not going to spend any time on sizing or discussing the particular character of these shear studs. An important point to make is that uh, continuity over an interior support is not very significant for floor decking, at least relative to service loads because what the service loads tend to do is create a negative moment over the support and that means tension on the top and compression on the bottom but because the concrete is on the top and the steel decking is on the bottom the concrete doesn't work very well in tension so effectively from a structural point of view we develop tiny cracks on the top of the concrete over that support and in essence, under service loads, we don't have continuity, or at least not full effective continuity of the composite slab. And you'll notice, by the way, the word composite is used as part of this table. Um, so when we go into this table, we're going to discover that the one span, two span, and three span actually is only significant relative to the ability of the decking to support the concrete during construction. So we'll talk about that in more detail when we get to it. Um, in, in the case of floor decking, you can have a certain depth of slab. So for example, or excuse me, corrugated material. In this case, um, let me just see if I can pull this down. No, nope. it's uh, not on this table anyway, but we're dealing in, in this case with a certain depth and uh, that's designated on a previous page. So in fact, rather than get into that at this point, I'm going to uh, just talk about what this looks like. All right, so this is a view from down below decking. This decking has been sort of crimped or damaged there, but uh, in essence, we've got the bottom flute and up in this groove, we've got the top flute and then this embossing is occurring on all the uh, nearly vertical sides to assure this composite action. Here you see another view of a floor. In this case, the decking is spanning in this direction. It's being supported by these joists. In this particular building, there were many shear studs to allow composite action between the wide flange beams and the decking up above. And we particularly do that almost anywhere we use wide flanges because we'll typically be using wide flanges to get a shallower floor sandwich than we could get, for example, with open web trusses. So the composite action between the beams and the floor turns out to be quite important. In this case, you'll notice that the corrugated decking extends beyond the final beams in the, in the column grid. And in order to support it, we've got these uh, stubs of beams that are welded on. Uh, typically, these have to have continuity over the top, but because these beams are so short, they might actually be getting all the moment capacity they need out of this clip angle connection. 
This is an edge angle, which is resting on top of the edge, the end of this beam. That edge angle provides the formwork for the concrete, but also provides a good sturdy edge to which we can attach various things, such as clips for curtain wall connectors. This is an interior view. Again, you see around this stair opening, there is angle welded down to the girders and joists. And this angle provides the framing around the opening, which provides sturdy steel to make uh, connections to, such as supporting the stairs or supporting wall elements that are hanging off of that edge. Uh, it also provides the formwork for the concrete. And here you see the edge angles again on the boundary of the building. This is a close-up view of a prefabricated angle that's been ground and smoothed down and then welded into place on the site. This is an interior view of that and all this stuff in the corner, by the way, is temporarily welded on elements that are used to create railings around this opening to protect people during the construction process. This is what that floor looks like after uh, the concrete is poured. This edge around here is actually steel angle, but it's gotten enough concrete uh, slopped on the surface of it that it looks like concrete. But that nice clean edge there is possible because that steel angle was put in place. Now, most of the time for steel decking, it can be long enough that it can have multiple spans. For example, this decking running across the top of these joists is at least a three span situation in almost every case. Every once in a while though, you end up with a situation that can only be one span. For example, this lowered portion of the floor was sunk down and supported on the lower flange of these girders around the side. It was sunk down to create a small auditorium space. And because of the nature of it, the, the decking could only run from this support to that support and basically couldn't have con continuity. So this would be single span mode. This would be multiple span mode. And now we'll go look at the charts and see what the implications of that are. So here we have um, one and a half inch uh, deep corrugated decking, uh, which by the way, you'll notice is shown in composite action as part of a composite floor with concrete. So one and a half inch means it's an inch and a half deep. VL just happens to be the particular shape or profile designation. Again, these sheets come in a maximum length of 42 feet. Um, and you'll notice as you go down here, there's, there's again section properties that tell you about what um, gauge of material is used. So this is 16 gauge, which has a thickness of 0.04. 98.0598 inches, which is almost a sixteenth of an inch. So again, we say 16 gauge is about a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, higher gauges are actually thinner. Larger gauge numbers are thinner. Um, here we have the weight in pounds per square foot of the steel decking itself and a bunch of other structural properties that uh, very esoteric people use every once in a while. Now, you'll notice on this first page, it always says normal weight concrete, 145 pounds per cubic foot, unreinforced. Um, so you can use normal weight concrete. Typically, I don't, because uh, you get a better fra uh, fire rating from uh, lower density concrete. So we're gonna use the next page, which looks like this. It says lightweight concrete, 110 pounds a cubic foot and then it gives all the span data down below. Now, for right now, uh, these numbers are less interesting, so we're going to blow up this part of the chart in order to look at it more closely, and this is what it looks like. So we're dealing with one and a half inch deep uh, decking, lightweight concrete, 110 pounds per cubic foot, and we're given all kinds of options here, such as, um, I'm gonna go down a little bit here, um, we're told it's lightweight concrete. 
uh, three and a half inches thick overall uh, would give us a net uh, thinnest portion of two inches and this number 26 pounds per square foot is the weight of the concrete in that situation um, for a four inch decking the thinnest parts are two and a half inches thick which is four inches minus one and a half that weighs 30 pounds a square foot four and a half is 35 pounds a square foot five inches is 39 pounds a square foot five inches by the way of lightweight concrete is pretty good for resisting vibrations and gives you a quite good fire rating and in some instances you might even want to go to a six inch decking when you have special fire rating issues or special noise suppression issues. All right, so we're going to look at five inch deep for the moment and we're going to say we're dealing with one and a half inch deep VL. We have the option from 16 gauge to 22 gauge. Now, here, I mentioned this earlier, but I'll reiterate it. Here we have SDI maximum unshored clear span. So the question is, what does that mean? Well, one of the biggest challenges for this decking is to hold the green uncured concrete while the concrete is curing. And, and that's the situation actually where continuity of the decking is most important. So you'll notice, in fact, that the only place one span, two span, and three span are mentioned is under this SDI maximum unsured clear span. In other words, this is the construction issue. Can it hold the concrete while the concrete is curing? But when we get out into the superimposable live load, which is our service load, um, we don't worry about dead load because it's already accounted for in this chart, all of this information, at least from the decking point of view, like this 26 pounds per square foot, or the 39 pounds per square foot for the five inch thick decking. That's all accounted for. And now the rest of this table gives us the superimposable live load or service load uh, on this decking. For this portion of the table, we don't have any mention of one span, two span, or three span. And the reason is what I mentioned earlier, which is if we have continuity over a beam, it doesn't help us that much because the negative moment is not resisted because the concrete doesn't work in tension. So when you end up with tension on the top of the beam, the beam just cracks and it becomes effectively like a whole series of simple span beams, even though there is continuity of the decking. Okay, so here we have one span, two span, and three span. Um, four um, our particular situation, if we have a one span situation, 16 gauge will allow us to go eight feet, two inches and still support the concrete. A two span situation will allow us to go to 10 feet, five inches and still support the concrete. In a three span situation, we can go even a little further to 10 feet, nine inches and still support the concrete. These lengths become much less when we go to lighter gauge decking such as 22 gauge. So let's uh, do a problem um, using this table to size some decking. So we're going to do the following example. We're going to assume a seven foot six inch span for the decking between the supporting trusses or beams as the case may be. We'll be operating in one span mode for the decking We'll use one and a half inch deep corrugated steel floor decking, lightweight concrete and composite action with the corrugated decking, a five inch overall decking thickness and an 80 pound per square foot live load. So this might be an office building, for example. So first, considering 1.5 inch deep corrugated uh, steel floor decking in one span mode, what is the gauge of decking that is required to meet the Steel Decking Institute maximum unsured clear span to support the concrete during the curing process? So we're going to go to this table and we're going to say we're down here. We want to span seven and a half feet and we're told we're in one span mode. So we're in this column and seven feet won't work. 18 gauge will only span seven feet under the concrete load. So we got to go to 17 gauge, which I remind you is thicker 
lower numbers means thicker gauge. Seven feet seven inches exceeds slightly our seven foot six inches. So we would say in one span mode for the five inch overall thickness, we need 17 gauge material. And so here we've written 17 as the answer to this question. Part B is considering the same corrugated steel floor decking in one span mode. What is the gauge of decking that is required to meet the live service load? So we're going to go back here and we're going to say it's 80 pounds a square foot. And we're at seven feet, six inches. So when we come down here, um, everything is hugely oversized. So this is a really a nice message. It says basically, once we've sized for our construction load, we're pretty well over designed. So we can go to 22 gauge. So when we come into our uh, answer sheet here, we're going to write 22 there. So we could have very light, light gauge material from uh, a service load point of view. Now, you may be tempted to say, well, we could, we could avoid this 17 gauge and use the light gauge if we could find a way to support the concrete during the concrete pouring and curing process. And that's true. You can pay for shoring. Uh, we almost never do that, though. If that turns out to be such a big issue, we'll try to use more closely spaced joists or find some other solution. But the cost of shoring is almost never worth it. Okay, so it says from the results above, what is the gauge of decking that is required to meet both the SDI maximum unshored clear span criterion during construction and the service live load criterion? And the answer is 17 because we have to pick whichever of these is heavier and the 17 gauge is heavier than the 22 gauge. So now we're asked, what is the self weight of the corrugated decking? So we're going to go back a couple here and we're going to pick the following. We're going to say for 17 gauge, the weight per square foot is 3.19. And you'll notice it doesn't have painted and galvanized because this material is almost always done and galvanized. So this will be the weight of whatever material you would get. It says 3.19. So we come here and it says 3.19 pounds per square foot. And then it says, what's the self weight of the lightweight concrete decking? And the answer is 39 pounds per square foot, which was one of the first things that we noted. So we write that in here. So this is an example of how these tables can be used to size or select decking uh, to span the seven and a half feet. Um, We'd now like to turn this problem around, similarly what to what we did with roofs. And when we do this, we're going to look at three inch deep decking. So this is 3VLI, which means it's three inches deep. It's the VLI shape. The maximum length of sell it to you and deliver it is 42 feet. And you'll notice here it says 24 or 36. So this is a little different from the roof decking, which was only 24 inches for the three inch decking. Uh, for some reason for floors, they can sell it to you in either 24 or 36 inch widths. And we're going to focus again on 5 inch deep, which in this case, um, for normal weight, weighs 44 pounds a square foot. But again, we don't want to use normal weight, so we're going to go to lightweight. Um, and here's the 5 inch now, which weighs 34 pounds a square foot. It actually weighs a little less than in the previous problem because more of the five inch is being chewed away by the deeper corrugations. So now we're going to uh, define a problem, which is consider the following floor decking. And again, we're going to turn the problem around. Instead of saying we've got a certain span, we want to pick the decking, which is our more normal design process we're going to ask ourselves, how far can we span with this so that we can go check our spans and proportions tables. So we're going to look at one and a half deep corrugated steel floor decking, composite action with lightweight concrete, 
5 inches overall decking thickness. Uh, one span mode, 80 pounds a square foot. And I just m misspoke because we are going to go back and use the one and a half inch tables to do this. So we're going to go up here and we're going to ask the following question. We were told this is a one span mode, 80 pounds per square foot. And we're asking the question, what's the maximum distance that we can span with that? So we'll go up here and we'll say, given all the gauges, so we're down here, given all the gauges, uh, for this five inch decking, what's the maximum depth that we can go on, in this case, we're in one span. It says, while the concrete is curing, in other words, this SDI maximum unsured clear span is eight foot, two inches. And we can't go here and we can't go there because we were told it was one span. So we're gonna come back here and we're gonna write in eight foot, two inches as the maximum span that will satisfy this SDI unsured clear span. The second question, or part B, is considering all the possible gauges of 1.5 inch deep corrugated steel roof decking in the one span mode, what's the maximum span under the combined uh, the uh, service life load? And so we're going to go back to our table, and uh, we're looking here at 16 gauge and we're targeting 80, and the table only goes to 12 feet. And so we could try to find a table that goes further and do various things, but we don't really care because it says we can go 12 feet under superimposed live load, and we could go further because we're looking for 80 pounds a square foot but we don't care because actually we know this is governing. So I'm gonna come back and when it comes to um, the answers here, I'm gonna write in 12 feet here, but we know that that actually is a pretty absurdly low number. But then the next question is, so I could say uh, greater than 12 feet. And for right now, we're just going to let it go at that because we're looking at spans and proportions and this number is actually not the control anyway. So now we come, we say, considering all possible gauges of one and a half inch deep corrugated steel roof decking in one span mode, what's the maximum span satisfying both the SDI unsured clear span limit and the service live load limit? And the answer is 8.2, which we get from right here. We'll never get to 12 because this is the control. So for that span, we take the length. We're just asked to get the span to depth ratio. So we take the length, which is eight foot, two inches. We multiply that times 12 inches per foot. And then we divide it by the depth of the decking, which is one and a half inch. And when we do that, we get 65. So you remember that this is now depth is equal to L over 65. In our guidelines, we said the proportions, the shallowest proportions that you can typically reasonably expect are L over 64. So the question is, is this number reasonably consistent with the guidelines on spans and proportions for corrugated decking? And the answer is absolutely yes. And again, I remind you that that L over 64 was taken by looking at lots of spans, load conditions, and support conditions. And so 65 is certainly consistent with that. That ends our video on selecting and sizing corrugated steel decking for floors using tables.